You better wear this if you want to turn this into powder. Hi folks, it's Darcy from thepurposefulpantry.com. Today we're doing peppers, all sorts. We've got banana, Anaheim, jalapeno, and bell that we're doing in a blend. And if you're gonna turn this into a powder, you're probably gonna wanna wear one of these to keep it from getting into your lungs and making you cough and being a problem. Okay, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna use both my knife and my dash chopper here to work on getting these processed. You can choose to dry a pepper whole when they're smaller with thin with thin walls like these uh, and smaller little sweet peppers and they're really tiny peppers. Drying them whole is fine because you have thinner walls and sometimes drying them whole is a better way to store for you, okay? For some things like jalapenos, they're a little bit different because they can be really thick walls depending on the actual pepper. And I probably should put some gloves on before I do all these. Um, this has got a pretty thick wall. So instead of just drying them whole like this, I would at least cut off the, the uh, end of it so that you can have some air movement going inside to make this go a little faster. Okay, you can slice these, you can dice these, you can strip these, whatever you want, okay? They don't have to be any particular way. It's how you're gonna use them in the end that matters. All right, so what I'm working with are clearance uh, peppers that I found when I went to the grocery store. It was like, you know, I need more peppers, we're out. Uh, and my son will love having some variety for his ramen bowls, which is what he loves to use peppers for. And I broke my entire jar of peppers. Uh, and lost them all. So I'm starting over again, trying to rebuild that jar. So I found these, got a couple bags of them, and so we're gonna work with that. Okay, I just realized we wanna talk about the guts, okay? When you're doing these, you can just dry them just like this. Cut them, dry them, and let the seeds fall as they dry. The seeds will come out. They will not stay in the in the rings if you do it that way. If you like the seeds, then you don't have to worry about it at all. If you're really worried about the seeds, you can take them out ahead of time. Like when you do bell peppers, there will be thousands of ways for people to tell you how to cut a bell pepper. I'm going to do it this way for quick. Okay, the bulk of that pepper that we have to deal with is out. Yeah, I'll trim that down in a minute. So you can take out whatever white, um, I forgot what that's called, ribs, they're not ribs, uh, but the white ribs here, you can take that out uh, and then you can remove the seeds as you go. As you can see, I follow my own advice. I went and put some gloves on because I am prone to <laughs> this affecting me and I'm not gonna take the chance. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up prepping all of these, these uh, peppers the way I'm gonna prep them for my home. Now the question of blanching, do you blanch peppers before you dry them? You do not have to. Uh, they are on the, you don't have to blanch. All right, as we start to put these on our trays, I need to let you know that um, they can stain, especially bell peppers. Um, so if you want to protect your trays, make sure you put protective coatings on, coverings on them. Uh, if you're using mesh, okay, uh, it will stain your mesh, but remember, stained mesh is a sign of a well-loved dehydrator. That means you've been using it, you've been putting food away in your pantry, they're gonna get stained after a while. If you choose, you can use parchment paper so that you can just toss it after, um, but I, I just prefer not to, okay? It's just gonna, they're just gonna go on just like this. So I am going to lay these out onto my trays. They will shrink, um, but I still am not going to pile them on the way that I would herbs or uh, maybe onions that would shrink up a ton. I prefer to go ahead and make sure that uh, they've got some space to work with.
because jalapenos have a thicker wall uh, that's denser than the banana and the Anaheim, I am going to make sure that I'm doing more of a solid, just single layer of these. I'm not gonna pile them on in the same fashion. All right, we're gonna set our temperature to 125. A couple, temp a couple degrees, doesn't matter when you go down, it's no problem at all. Time, I'm gonna set up, time, I'm gonna set way ahead because I don't go by the time, I go by when they're done. All right, these may take anywhere, these may take anywhere from eight to 12, 14 hours, depending on how thick you cut it, how much you pile it on, your machine, your home's humidity. Today, it's really humid in our part of the world. And because I'm gonna have the doors open and the vent going on for much of the first couple of hours of this, because this can be problematic for people who have lung issues. I have asthma and all of the oils from the Jalapenos get in the air and can actually cause breathing problems, so we're going to have everything open. Normally, I would have this going outside, but because of the way the weather's working today, it's not an option. So we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to leave the house for a while uh, and have the house open, and then this will be dry in about 8 to 12 hours. Somewhere in that time range, generally, it may take a little longer. It may take a little less. It just depends on so many factors. So here we go. All right, so after approximately, so these were about 18 hours because we had a massive storm system come through and it was so humid, even with air conditioning, uh, because we're in spring in Texas, it gets hot, we use our air conditioning. Uh, it still took a little longer to dry the bell peppers than it did anything else. Now, why? Because one, these were cut smaller, they should have dried faster. Bell peppers are just a denser pepper than the other ones, so it took a little longer to dry. They also had more moisture in them than your other peppers, so they took longer to dry. So here are our sheets. These are the ones that I just put on leather. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the bits here is all of the moisture that was the liquid that was there when I put these down because it had a chance to start releasing their moisture after they sat for a little while. Um, that's all that is, which is why I always recommend using a protective sheet uh, instead of your regular mesh if you don't want things to stain because they can stain. But again, a stain dehydrator sheet shows that you've been using it. Storing food in your pantry, it's a good thing. So here are the bell peppers. Here are all the jalapeno peppers. Here are the banana peppers and the Anaheim peppers. Okay, I've already started loading my jar. Um, these are gonna take a lot more space because they were not crushed down. Um, so I went ahead and got a gallon that will fill most of what's gonna be in here to condition this week. That's what's gonna happen. Um, I'm taking my uh, Anaheim peppers here and I'm gonna put them in. So how do you know when peppers are dry? They should crush easily in your hand once you've worked with them. Pull out a sample. Let it come to room temperature. Should only take five or 10 minutes. Test it, then determine whether or not you still need to have it in there longer or you're done. And then you move on to conditioning, which is what we're doing now. I am combining all of these peppers into one jar because the only person who's really gonna eat them like this is my son. And so this will be the jar for him. Um, now we're gonna do the bell peppers. Oh, so you're gonna see this on the counter as we do this. These seeds that you may see, Sorry about that, I know that's loud, sorry. Okay, the seeds that you're gonna start seeing on the counter, when you're storing them in the jar, the jarring of all of the product on the inside is gonna start releasing a lot of those seeds that I didn't take out, and they'll be at the bottom of the jar after a while. But also, my son doesn't care about the seeds, he actually likes a little extra heat, so that's fine. You can take out the seeds before, like I mentioned, as you're starting to prep, you can take them out at this point by, you can shake your trays a lot and those seeds will fall out or you can just let it happen naturally. What I do not recommend, because you're only gonna see these couple right now, 
are not trying to plant these seeds later. The heat in a dehydrator is generally too warm to have seeds dry and germinate later. You want air drying. So if you have a Sahara folding dehydrator, like the one that I use that's wide and can fold up and down to store, uh, it has an air dry only feature on it, so it only puts out air with no heat. Or you can just let them air dry between two paper towels, and that will be sufficient to have seeds for the next year. Okay, so we'll put these in. Usually just doing this with your netting releases most things before you pour it, so it'll pour easier. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this in the camera. Um, there is a lot of discoloration on this netting, this uh, mesh for the machine. Most of it is just the released moisture as these sat for a few minutes while I was preparing everything else and then getting everything on trays. It starts to release the moisture because you've cut it up and you've messed with it. So a lot of that is the moisture that has dried onto the mesh. Most of this will come clean in some hot soapy water, allow to soak for a while, a light scrub, and you're good. If it does stain, remember, just like I've said a couple of times, stained sheets are a reflection of a loved dehydrator and food in your pantry. So don't worry about staining your sheets. It doesn't matter. There's not much of a difference. There's not an in-between size with these. This is too much for the quart, not quite enough for the, the half gallon, but we're going to go with this for right now. Um, every day for a week, you're going to shake this jar up and you're going to make sure that, uh, that nothing is sticking together in a clump. Nothing is sticking, sticking together on the sides of this, that when you turn it over and things stick, if it comes off with a light shake, then you're good. If it takes a shake to get it off, you need to put it back in the dehydrator. You do this for five to seven days, however you'd like to do it. Um, and then once it's done, then you can store it however you'd like. You can go ahead and process it through the, the, the and make powder if you'd like. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, so at this point, if I was ready to store, I've gone through all of my conditioning phase, I would move this into the right size jar. This is too large of a jar unless you're going to, because every time we open it, you're introducing more air and moisture here in the excess space. So you want to store things in a jar that's about the, the same size as the product that you have on the inside of it. Now, of course, I could squish this down a little bit and it would go fine into a quart jar um, to store for good. Uh, but, but the conditioning phase needs a larger jar so that you have space to move. So, um, in fact, right now I'm waiting on a text from my son to ask him what he wants me to do with this. Does he want it all powder? Does he want a left foot like this so that he can just add this to ramen? Uh, and in just a minute, I'll tell you the next step. So he asked for half and half, so this is what we're going to do. Here are, I've moved our uh, peppers into a, a smaller jar because they didn't need that big half gallon now that we took part of it out to dehydrate, I meant to powder. This can be conditioned just like it is, uh, or you can go ahead and store it. You know, if you've gone through the conditioning, you're ready to go. Um, I know that I over dried these, in fact, so that I could do this ahead of time. So we're going to go ahead and powder. All I'm doing is putting them into a, it's called a Nutribute. <coughs> Okay, all I've done is put them into my, my bullet blender. You can use a bullet blender, you can use a coffee grinder. I don't recommend a large blender unless you're doing a large amount of powder that you plan on processing through pretty quickly because powders generally only last for about six to nine months for most powders. So you don't wanna do more than you're gonna use within that time so that it doesn't start to degrade. So this is what I'm gonna do. And as with all blenders, with whether you're doing a bullet blender, whether you're doing a coffee grinder, um, let me pull you up just a little bit. Uh, whether you're doing a bullet blender or a coffee grinder, you don't want to just press down and just go because things that are a little harder to uh, powder are going to make the motor work harder and you're going to burn it out faster. So just pulse, 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 and then go ahead and go if you've seen that it's kind of broken down. So here we go.
Now warning, I should have warned everybody about this before. If you are particularly um, sensitive to heat, to oils from things like peppers that get in the air and that makes you cough, you're going to want to use a mask before you do this, um, especially once you've opened it. It's going to release a ton of stuff into the air that could be a problem for you if you have lung issues. Um, so be prepared when you're doing this to have goggles, to have a face mask, whatever you need to do to make this work for you so that as you open it, you're not ingesting all that into your system and then causing a All right, sorry if the voices change. I might be talking a little loud to try to compensate, but I put a mask on because I know that this is gonna bother me. If I start getting a whiff of this, it's gonna be a problem. All right, so shake your jar up quite a bit so that you can get all the extra off. You do not wanna stick your face on top of this when you first open it. You're gonna let it just waft into the air and then go ahead and clean off your blade. I just used an art brush that I got from a craft store on sale. It was in the clearance bin. I've got a couple of them that I that I changed between. I really prefer the fan blade that I have, but this one works as well. All right, now that we're done, I'm going to go ahead and put this into the jar. It's going in so that you can see. See that powder? That is pepper powder. That's going to be a quad blend. Bell pepper, Anaheim, banana, and jalapeno. All ready for adding to anything. So we're going to store it just like this. Now, let me take a moment and get my mask off and let the air clear. Now, in order to rehydrate these, if you're going to use them for a meal, and you want to have something that they're going to be in... Um, that you don't want to put them in raw. Like we would actually put these on a pizza and then cook the pizza and it would be fine because we would like it that way. But you may not. You may want something that is already soft and ready to go that when you add it to something quick, you want it fully done. Um, well, if you're going to put these in a soup or a stew or something, you know, you can just put them in just like this because it's going to have time to cook and soften in the simmering process. But if you need them soft beforehand, simply put some in a jar of water. Shake it up enough and just let them soak. This is the best way to me to do this. And then you can still use this water in a, in a super stew or whatever. I mean, you can use that for a lot of things. It's going to release some of its nutrients and colors and stuff into that. If you want to do this a little quicker, you can put it in a bowl full of hot water, uh, boiling water even, to let it steep in that water. Or you can simmer it on the stovetop in a small uh, container to, to create the same effect. I just find that it doesn't take long to do it this way. There's no extra to be done. Uh, and I will just let this sit for an hour or so and they'll be ready to go. Okay, what do you do with this powder next? You want to condition the powder. It sounds weird. You've already conditioned the peppers. Why are you having to do this a second time? The reason is, is that as you've put this through the mixer, it creates a heat friction that makes things start sticking together. It starts activating the sugars and it can make things sticky. You also have this powder that's been just all of the, the surface area has been exposed to whatever moisture is in the air. If you happen to be in a, in a high humid climate, this may start sticking. So the best thing to do is to lay this out on a sheet of uh, fruit leather or parchment to stick this then into an oven that's been warmed but turned off. You don't want it to, to be hot. You just want it to be warmed and then turn it off and let this sit for about 15 minutes in there. Then turn around, let it cool, put it in your jar and you're good to go. Um, I am not going to do this because this will be gone in about three, four days. I won't have to do that. You can see that it doesn't make a tremendous amount of powder, but this powder is pretty potent. I wouldn't use more than a teaspoonful in a big meal. 
Um, but you can use this in place of any kind of powder, any kind of pepper powder that you might use to give a different flavor. So if you want to change the flavor of taco seasoning instead of using just chili powder, use this because it's going to give it a whole different flavor. Or kick up the spice a little bit and just add a little bit of extra this into your typical taco seasoning. You can use this to do in rubs if you like a little kick of heat. Uh, to put in jerkies, you know, the jerky rub that you might create for the marinade, you can do that. But you can use this just like a seasoning. Any kind of um, any kind of pepper seasoning, this can be a replacement for it. So there you go. This is going to store for about a year. Uh, I would always put moisture absorbers in this because peppers can tend to get soft over time, especially if you're in and out of the jar. Uh, so I would put a moisture absorber in here while you're storing it. I would not use oxygen absorbers because they're not needed and you can't get it in and out of the jar. Uh, this will store for about six to nine months, maybe longer. It just depends on so many factors, but I tend to make less powder uh, to store. I use powder for de on demand. So this will be gone within a week, but I would probably make about two or three months of this at a time if I'd made enough to create bulk. So there you go. Peppers, pepper powder. If you want to learn more about how to dehydrate other peppers, you can check this video right here. We did sweet peppers. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating.